Glad you could join me again today. Today we're going to talk about stinky stuff. And you know, I doubt that there's a person on the face of this earth that doesn't have some sort of stinky stuff in their life. Something in their family they hope nobody finds out. Something in their past they really don't want to discuss. Or something that's been stuffed like that uh, skeleton <laughs> in the closet. Stinky stuff. And for others, there's stinky stuff that just pongs through every day of their life. They can't hide it in a closet. Disappointments, abuse, mental cruelty, self-doubt, and a host of other things fill their days until the whole life is, is taken up by the stench. And then it just masks the whole beauty of life. Because some things in life we just can't hide, can't we? And you know, stinky stuff loves to rise in the night, doesn't it? It likes to haunt us through the day and make us feel like there are no, there's no escape. There's no deodorant that's strong enough to mask the odor and freshen the room. And then at night, it just drives us crazy as it just keeps replaying and replaying and replaying the stinky stuff in our life. So what can we do with this stinky stuff? Well, we can keep spraying room freshener, but that's not going to ha happen, is it? It's, we can still smell it. We can spray the odor of God's Word on it, though, and that can help it. Stinky stuff smells like, like fear and doubt and open wounds and heartache, but God's Word says He's there to bind up our wounds and to uh, heal our hearts. I think that God knows that we have stinky stuff, don't you? You would like to put it in a closet and close the lid, but we still have that sinking feeling, that sneaky suspicion that it just might creep out and we know that it's lurking behind us in the closet or wherever we've tried to hide it. So hiding it away is, is not a, the thing to do. It's not the real remedy for stinky stuff. The best way to deal with it is to render it neutral, to remove the emotional attachment that it has and just let it be what it is old stuff. It's stuff that we no longer need, we don't want, but yet it's casting a shadow across our lives. And how do we do that? How do we neutralize the odor of the stinky stuff? Well, I want to give you three, and not necessarily easy, steps that will help you uh, bring a more ple pleasant fragrance to your life. And step one is to call it what it is. It's stinky stuff. It's stuff that's hurt you, stuff that left you scarred. It may be an event, something that happened. It might be a word that was said, and a, a something that where you were overlooked or a, an unforgiveness. Whatever it is, just call it by name. Maybe your stinky stuff is a father that abandoned you, and you just need to say that out loud. My father abandoned me. And just say it. And then try to sit there long enough and state it as a fact until the emotional attachment begins to dissipate. It's a cold, hard fact. Some things in our life are that we can't change them. They're done. They're over with. They're there. But they don't have to have emotional attachment. No anger or fear or seeking revenge or craving of acceptance is going to change the fact of what happened. It is just a fact. So step one is just to repeat it that way. Every piece of stinky stuff in your life, just state it. And then you can move on to deal with it and would deal with each one individually. And eventually, you're going to start recognizing stinky stuff and you're going to move it through that step one a whole lot faster. Just state it. State it for what it is. And once you've called it by name and the emotional um, attachment or response is beginning to lessen, then you're ready for step two. Take that stinky stuff to the cross and apply God's forgiveness and mercy to your situation. You see, God knows all about our stinky stuff. And though it might trouble us, He sees it very differently. Your stinky stuff to God has purpose. And that might sound awfully harsh. But the Bible teaches us that trials are there to create good stuff in our life. They teach us that the Bible... Uh, gives us endurance, if I put it that way. That It gives us patience. It teaches us how to love and how to forgive. And as we apply God's Word to our stinky stuff, we learn those things too. And they give us the testimony of God's grace and a way for us to see Him working in our lives and to share that with others. Because you know what? Jesus died for our stinky stuff. Our stinky stuff is the result of sin, isn't it? And it does stink. It's awful and it smells. And it's exactly, though, 
what God will use to bring blessing and joy to our lives. Kind of hard to swallow, kind of hard to accept, but as you seek God's perspective on your situation, it will bring you into submission to his sovereignty and his plan for your life. And I'll guarantee you, to you that some of this stinky stuff is awful and sin is awful, but we needn't think that we can't get that we can get through life untouched. We're going to be touched by this life. We are broken people living in a broken world, but God is fully aware of our situation. He's right there, and he's ready to reason with you as you go through the process of cleaning house. If you aren't careful, though, you can get stuck on step two. And it's a real tem temptation to keep dwelling on the bad things of life and take on that victim mentality. But when we do that, we're allowing the stinky stuff to rule in our life. And we aren't moving on to victory or to the third step. So we need to consider these scriptures. Philippians 3.13 says, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. There's an attitude that means that we must focus on what is before us and not fall victim to our past. The past is past. It's just a fact. It can't be changed. And we're better to draw that line and turn our attention to the future. Colossians 5.16 says, Confessing your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Some of our stinky stuff might actually be our fault. And if it is, it's our best thing to do is to make amends, to seek forgiveness, and to clear up the misunderstandings with others. And that, too, will heal our hearts. Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the enemy wants to hold your stinky stuff over your head. But if you've received forgiveness from God, then you are free from that power. That stinky stuff can't do that anymore to you. You can walk in the Spirit free from guilt. So step two is about applying Scripture and finding forgiveness. And step three is time to use what you've learned. Your stinky stuff becomes now a tool for God to use. In everything, give thanks. That's what the scripture says, and that's what should guide your life now. Had you never experienced what you have experienced, you would not be able to speak into the lives of others who are uh, experiencing similar things, and you wouldn't have the genuine understanding and empathy that's needed to be an encouragement to others. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 to 10 is Paul's attitude here about step 3. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my grace, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, be thankful for them, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. His trials, these trials that God has ordained, produce spiritual strength. And dealing with your stinky stuff will do the same for you. Think about this. Had Jesus not endured the path to the cross, suffering so, so, so hard and so deep for us, he could not have been the Savior of our salvation. He had to drink the cup that the Father had prepared for him. And this hardness has the potential to produce great benefit, not only in the life of Christ for us for salvation, but also for us in the lives of ourself and the lives of others. And your experience with the hard things of your life is a benefit, a benefit for those around you. So step three, turn your stinky stuff into a sweet smelling savor. It becomes a place of glorious victory as you learn to leave it behind and move on with Christ. I like to think of these three steps like this. The stinky stuff in my life is the stuff that lives in the basement. And you know, it can't stay there. Its stink will rise into every floor of my life unless I clear it out. And to clear it out, I have to bring it upstairs and expose it to the light, the light of God's word, and I have to face it down with truth. Its power is gone once I follow God's instructions. And then I take it up to the roof and I let it go. And if people ask me what I'm doing, I tell them about this stinky stuff that wounded me and how through Christ I gained victory and now that I can give thanks to the Lord for all that he taught me and how he healed me. Before we finish today, I want to recommend a book for you. It's called Leaving Yesterday Behind by a man named William Hines. 
and it's an older book. You can get it used on Amazon or any of the booksellers, but it's one that you will truly gain from if stinky stuff is hanging around in your life. Step one, call it what it is. Step two, take it to the cross. And step three, thank God that he brought you through. I'll see you next week.